now that I'm a child of God and I have his life, hey, come on. What else will I ever need? Nothing. You, you, you get the idea? Now imagine if it's true that he died for me and he was raised from the dead for me. If it's true, and it is true, if it's true that I've received his life and nature into my spirit by his word as he prophesied and decreed. If it's true, why would I need to do anything to be blessed? Doesn't make sense. Come on, talk to me. It doesn't make sense. If I'm a child in this family, then I'm an heir in this family. Not because I deserve it, but because I'm born here. Come on, somebody. Did you get what I said? The reason God's blessings belong to you is not because you're doing well. Not because you're serving him faithfully. Do you, do you understand? This is the reason many faithful Christians can't understand why with their faithfulness they are nice to God they use their scarf very well on Sunday you know I mean they don't do anything wrong they are clean and cool they are I mean they're cool they're, they're nice they can't understand why their prayers don't seem to always get answers they can't understand I mean, like uh, somebody, someone's telling me a story, something that happened in Benin City. Very interesting. You know, we had this, this meeting in Benin, and there was a lady uh, who, who received healing and came up the platform to testify. And I was laying hands on people as they came up to the platform. And now came up this lady, and uh, I, I laid hands on her, and uh, she went under the power, and I said, the Lord asked me to give you one million naira, And uh, of course she was in shock. Then I said, the Lord says I should increase it to two million naira. Now, she almost passed out. Okay. Now, after the service, here's the real thing. This is what I want you to listen to. After the service, someone was carried by a a taxi driver who happened to have been in the meeting but didn't know this other fellow was in that meeting and said I saw a wonderful thing today said an amazing thing and was telling the story he said you know Pastor Chris I was in the meeting today in Christ's embassy a woman came up the platform didn't even ask for anything and Pastor Chris said God told him to give the woman one million naira and then two million naira. And then he said, I have been asking God for only 65,000. <laughs> Are you following this? He said, I've been asking God for only 65,000. He hasn't given it to me yet. Now think about it. The woman didn't even ask for nothing. And, and, and he had been asking for 65,000. They get it. So he's wondering. I mean, isn't it easier for God to give me 65,000 than to give that lady 2 million? Praise God. That's the way many people are. You see, they wonder why the little miracle they're asking God for, they're not getting it. And then there's this sort of fellow who, in their minds, is not even a very, is not a serious Christian. He's getting all these miracles. That's what makes them sometimes to say that the miracles must be fake. 
because we are not acting like them in the way they think we should act like them. You know? So the miracles must be fake. There must be something we're doing. How can we have all that money? We must be stealing somehow. We, 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 we must be into some drug business or something. We must be doing something wrong and getting all this money. There must be some deception. So all the time you get all these people who come into some of our meetings and they're trying to find out where the catch is. Every little noise they hear, they turn around. <laughs> you, you, you think they're listening to the message. They're not. They're all the time looking for what, where is the catch. And as the ushers bring the up envelopes, they examine, examine, examine. You know, they're trying to find out what is it we've been doing. Glory to God. But I want to show you those things that we believe that have made our lives beautiful. Now, don't get, don't, don't, don't let anybody deceive you. You know, sometimes some people say, ah, oh, they're writing things about Pastor Christ. Listen, all of those things they write, good or bad, they don't make any difference. Are you hearing me? When they write something good, I don't care to see it. When they write something bad, I don't care to see it. You know why? Because they are not a factor. You see? They are not a factor. So be smart not to even give them a hearing. Because you see, people who are at the bottom always want to drag other people to stay with them. As long as you're with them, you're their friend. You start making progress and see. You become an enemy. If we were a little church, like somebody said, a minister one time said, uh, Pastor Chris was in one ramshackle building some years ago. How can he say that God gave him money to do all the things he's doing? So I knew him a few years ago where he was having a church. And he's trying to prove I got the money from somewhere else. He says, is it not the same God that was with him then? Why didn't the God give him that money at that time? Brother, I was growing my faith all that time. Don't you understand? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you see, there are things that we believe. And they are in the scripture. I will show you the one I want that I asked you to open. You already read it. But it's got to make sense to you. It has to make sense to you. Hallelujah. It's got to make sense to you. So let's read it again. Psalm 16 and verse 6. One to go. The lines are falling on to me in pleasant places. Yea, a goodly heritage. All right, now, you know, the Bible says for us to study. Okay? And studying means that you should exercise some painstaking effort. To look through the word and see exactly, exactly what it is saying. I read lots of translations in my study. So I can get all the shades. And I like to also study the original from where the translations were gotten. So that I can know why the translator said what he said and whether or not he's right praise the Lord so let me read to you the King James that you read and then I'll read to you another version I'll read the contemporary English version all right, and I want you to listen to the King James first. The lines have fallen unto me in pleasant places. 
Yea, I have a goodly heritage. Now, what's he saying? He says, the lines have fallen unto me. You know, when you can read this kind of a thing. Many of you have read Psalm 16. You've read the Psalms. You probably don't know what this means. He says, the lines have fallen unto me in pleasant places. That means, this man is talking about that um, there was, there was uh, an apportioning of property to different people. And they said, from here to here to here is for John Boo. From here to here to here to here to here is for Joanne. And from here to here to here to here is for Andrew. And Andrew found out that his own land, his own property, had a, a treasure in it. He found out there was oil. He found out there was diamond. He dug a little more and found out there was gold. He's got oil, he's got diamond, he's got gold in his own property. Then he says the lines, that means the borders. He says the lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. That means an awesome inheritance. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. So I found out my inheritance is better than the one Joanne got and the one that John Bull got. And I had nothing to do with it. It fell unto me. You see that? It fell my lot. Praise God. Now, I want to that's what he's saying now imagine if your life many years this has been your contemplation like it's been my contemplation you know why the other guy was fighting with God oh God do it for me Lord do it for me Lord do it. I was saying the lines are falling onto me in pleasant places see I was spending time digging my gold you see that Playing with my diamonds, pulling out my oil, while he's asking God, oh, oh God. John Bull and Joanne, they can't understand, but the lines are falling onto me. You see the mentality? Well, our lives cannot be the same. Our lives cannot be the same. I see all the good things in my land. And they can't find nothing. So they're going to live a life of complaining. And worrying. Then someone said, well, so whose fault is it? Is it not the person that gave them the land? Yes. So what do you do? Find out what's in your land. The oil was not on the top surface. The gold was not on the top surface. The diamonds were not on the top surface, brother. Find out what you got in your land. Listen to this. Let me read it again to you and then I'll read to you the, the contemporary English version. The lines are falling under me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. That's my confession. That's my confession. Say that with me. The lines are falling unto me. In pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. If you thought that was wonderful, listen to the CEV. Give us a clearer picture of what he hears. Listen, listen, listen. Pay close attention. Mm. Even to think about this, it reminds me of Ossie's song. Let me, let me read it to you. Some of you have seen it already. 
you, you feel like stretching out, you know? He says, you make my life pleasant. And my future is bright. Now, imagine if you knew this. And it became your contemplation and your confession. Your life will be different from the other guy who's, oh God, bright in my future, bright in my future. You see, you're looking older. The more you pray like that, the older you, bright in my future, oh, bright in my future. He won't brighten your future. He doesn't do it like that. He has already done something. Did you see it? Did you see it? You make my life pleasant and my future is bright. So you go, Lord, you make my life pleasant. And you know, the moment you make that confession from your spirit, Everything lines up with your confession. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. Let me read something more to you so you get this. In the 11th verse. He says, Thou will show me the path of life. Have you seen it? Thou would show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures, pleasures forevermore. Ask, why? Ask, ask someone, why is your life so hard? You see, this is not God's plan. It's not God's plan for your life to be so hard. So he says, I've lived a very hard life. You are the problem. You know, the times people ask us, is it really as you are saying it? <laughs> what are you listening to? You want another book that tells you something different? Don't say, yeah, but it's not even in the same Bible. It's in the same Bible. He says that suffering, Christian, Christian people can suffer. They can't even quote it right. Say, there's, there's suffering. We suffer with Christ. Okay. <laughs> okay, how are you suffering from Christ now? Or suffering with Christ or suffering for him? How? how? Say, um, you go through hardship. What type of hardship? Sometimes someone might not have money. Okay, 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 okay. If, 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 if someone sometimes does not have money, what does that have to do? Eh, you won't be happy now. You are wrong. That's where you are wrong. That you don't have money at the time has nothing to do with the state of your spirit. It's got nothing to do with the state of your spirit. The Bible says, out of your heart are the issues of life, which means from that heart of yours is where the money will come from, is where everything that you require in life will come from. Why do you destroy the source it's in your spirit. So recondition your spirit. Reprogram your spirit to deliver to you all the necessities of life that you want. Somebody said, well, God doesn't answer uh, our prayers of our wants. He meets our needs. Okay. What is the meaning of Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified. If you shall ask anything in my name, anything, any, 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 
it doesn't answer your wants it's your need you don't pray for your need you only ask for those things you want you don't ask for your needs he told us already don't you know that my father knows the things that you need he said the birds of the air they don't ask for anything he says your father feeds them he said you are of more value than many sparrows that means for the things you need need you don't have to ask he says your father knows which means the ones you are asking for are the ones the additions those things you like to have you see you see the reason now why some people only i have only been asking for only sixty-five thousand. he didn't give me because he needs it and by the time imagine if you were asking god for only your house rent you are selfish oh god my house rent oh, i'm only at 150,000. it's my house oh god give me one 150,000. is that all you're asking god for no wonder he's not listening to you because you need more than 150,000. the 150,000 does not include your tithe if you took out your tithe he can't pay the rent so why are you asking God for only 150,000? Add your tithes to it. And that's not all. And that's not all. What about all the, the other seeds you want to give? What about putting money into a rhapsody of reality? Listen, brothers and sisters, get big enough to make the right demands of a heavenly father that's rich enough to supply be bold you you you, you think what well, you think it's a kind of humility when you say oh god i'm not asking for too much i'm, not asking for, I'm only asking for my transport fare to go to work god you say so all you think about is yourself all you think about is yourself what about becoming big enough to help some other people in your area what about that what about that god wants your dreams to be big enough to make him a part of your dream if your dream is too small he can't be a part of it god doesn't like small dreams he doesn't like to be a part of small dreams Oh, you're getting it now. Make it big enough for God to be a part of it. Well, there are different kinds of businessmen. If you go, if you go to the bank and you say that you need a certain amount of money, there's an official who will pass you to. If you're asking for two hundred thousand, they say go to that desk. They say what, what do you do? You say I, I do that. Say, okay, we go to that desk. If you come and say um, you need five billion, say what do you do? What do you do? By the time you explain what you do, and it looks like this is a guy that knows what five billion is, is it? Um, uh, hold on. They want to call a higher official to come and see you. Then the, is it, um, can we? Oh, okay, please come. They don't discuss with you at the open office. <laughs> can you say it now? So if your if your if your demands are going to be attended to. At the throne room, they must demand the attention of the throne room, brother. You get it. Will somebody shout hallelujah? Man, oh man. Hallelujah. Make your dream bigger. Lift your hands toward the heaven. Speak in other tongues. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 